What's going on you guys? This is Aaron from Departures Capital and welcome to the video. In this video, we're talking all about whether or not we feel like the market's overvalued. There's a lot of different topics. We're talking about gold and silver, just as it's pulling back today. Is the rally being threatened right now? Also, we're talking about the massive wealth transfer that's going on with all of the millennials. I've got some really interesting data when it comes to that. And let's just consider this a little bit of a step back. We've put so much emphasis on gold and silver over the past little while and we're still talking about it. But I wanted to give you guys an overall outlook on the markets as to where I think things are going, what could potentially happen in the future. And I want to open this video up for an audience discussion. So feel free to drop those comments. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on this recent rally. Is it sustainable? You know, we're seeing the markets yet again hit fresh all time highs. Apple hit two trillion dollars. It's a pretty crazy environment that we're in. So let's get into this video and all the information that I've prepared for you guys. Before we dive into this video in the introduction, I need to give a few quick shout outs. The first one is to Extra Gold. That's one company that we're working with. We put out two videos recently about the company. The stock has been performing very nicely and they should have some news for us within the coming weeks. So make sure to stay tuned for that. The next company that we need to give a quick shout out is to Eclipse Gold. We've also been working with them. We've put out two fantastic interviews and we should be interviewing their CEO again today on their recent results. So it's a pretty exciting time for these gold exploration stage companies. So make sure to stay tuned for those two videos along with the last shout out. And that is for Aftermath Silver. We recently dropped that video this morning on the channel. So if you're looking for some very interesting silver mining companies, we've got Aftermath Silver and Silver Elephant that we recently just dropped with two interviews to follow both chairman and CEO interviews. So it's a busy time for Departures Capital guys. Let's get straight into the video. And the last thing I'm gonna say is if you do support me, the channel and all the videos and don't forget to of course kindly explode that like button along with if you are a new viewer to the channel you haven't had a chance to subscribe yet but you appreciate a steady flow of new and exciting companies you want to stay up to date in the market to learn more about investing then don't forget to of course catch that subscribe button and hit the market bell for notifications and let's get straight into this video so first thing I want to do guys is comment of the day so thank you for all of the awesome comments first comment of the day goes to Masonic Kid waiting for a silver to take off to the moon he who stacks silver now will reap the benefits of gold later. Next comment of the day goes to Mutant. Sounds like Robert Kiyosaki lives at least one foot in reality. <laughs> Third comment of the day goes to Selty. The 2011 high in Barrick was before the merger with Rangold in 2019. So thanks for sharing that information. Next comment of the day goes to Brian Flynn Kootenay. And we've talked to them before, trying to get them on the channel. So we'll see if we can make that happen. And last comment goes to Christian. Man just regurgitates people who actually know what they're talking about in the precious metal space. So it's nice to have you here, Christian. Let's get some uh, interesting graphics from Doc about this guy. It's nice that some of you guys appreciate what I do and you know the videos that I put together. And then we have people like Christian who I don't even know why you're here, but um, thanks for the comment and thanks for helping out with the algorithm. Let's get straight into the next thing I want to talk about quickly, and that was an update on our private group. So, so far for our private group members, I wanted to let you guys know that we have dropped a few very interesting videos along with an update on our portfolio. And if we get a continued pullback, there are a few select gold and silver stocks that I will be probably adding to the portfolio or adding to positions in the metal sector along with a few unique dividend stocks. So if you're interested to see all the stocks that I have in my public portfolio, all the trades I make, feel free to check out this group. I haven't been selling it every day because you know I don't want to be like a broken record, join my group, join my group. But um, if you guys are interested in knowing those things, staying up to date on the markets, having a behind the scenes look at Departures Capital, feel free to join our group. It's $10 per month, $100 per year, and we will get into the rest of this video. So the S&P 500 hits record high as bulls continue to stampede. Apple hits $2 trillion in valuation. So this is the first time we've ever seen a US company hit $2 trillion in valuation. It seems as if yesterday, you know, there was companies hitting one trillion. So it's crazy how fast money flows. And, you know, I think this whole global illness has just sped things up essentially. So the S&P 500 continued to flirt with record highs underpinned by better than expected quarterly results from retailers and a boost by Apple. So it's surprising to see retail earnings come in strong. I wasn't really expecting retail earnings to come in very strong, but um, that's quite surprising. Let's take a look at gold and silver real quick, guys. We're going to take a look at gold and silver, and then we're going to get to the topic on the markets, whether I think it's overvalued, where I think things could be heading. And um, we'll have to take a look at the S&P 500, because essentially now we are in uncharted territory. So gold's now trading for 1974, down 1.9% or $38 per ounce. And, you know, I'm kind of getting cautious. 
I'm kind of getting a little concerned now. We are seeing what's looking like in terms of the three month gold chart. Now what it's looking to me is gold is actually making lower highs. So we'll see how low it falls this time on the pullback. Like I said, you know, I don't expect this run up in gold to be an overnight thing. So I'm cautiously optimistic now, I guess you could say, when it comes to the rally for gold and silver. And um, it seems as if investors want to continue to pile into the long trade on the overall indexes, the S&P, Apple, tech. It's a very crowded trade, but um, it's still running. So that's where a lot of the millennials are also putting their money. So let's take a quick look at silver. And silver is not doing as bad today. Gold is actually selling off more than silver. And I think, you know, silver is being supported a little bit by the positivity in the economy, or so they say, in the markets. And... Um, the positivity in the tech stocks because silver is a very industrial metal so personally i think the charts look a little bit more bullish for silver than they do for gold gold's more of a safe haven like i said silver's more of a it is a safe haven but also an industrial metal so i wouldn't be surprised if silver continues to outperform gold and then last but not least i want to give you guys a quick little update for gold so money managers are getting nervous about gold this is a morning brief and thanks to my dad for sharing this gold bulls everywhere but pros are getting worried that it's now overvalued. Now, personally, I don't think that gold is overvalued. I think gold is attempting to consolidate before it eventually moves higher. I think we'll get some catalyst. We already have the catalyst, a weaker dollar, more fiscal and monetary stimulus, but I feel like there will be more catalyst in the future to move the price of gold. Let's not forget, guys, just a couple days ago, Buffett bought you know over half a billion dollars worth of mining stocks. So I think that that's very significant. I think that that's gonna be, you know, I think that's going to be a long-term catalyst for the gold sector. But for now, we're seeing traders kind of control the market, in my opinion. And the one point I wanted to make here, according to Bank of America's monthly fund manager survey, a net 31% of respondents believe gold is overvalued, up from 0% a month ago. The survey also found that long gold ranked as the second most crowded trade in the financial markets behind long U.S. tech stocks. So it's no doubt that gold is getting a lot of love but it's also getting a lot of caution now. And we saw that happen in the Kitco surveys. We saw, you know, on Kitco, the surveys, amount of people dropping on mainly Wall Street, maybe not so much on Main Street, but a lot of people on Wall Street dropping their bullish bets and, and going a little bit more neutral to bearish, which is expected. Gold over 2000, you know, I definitely think it's a milestone. It's uncharted territory. And we're not just going to continue to go straight up. But I think long term, the fundamentals still remain in place. So now let's talk about a headline. So a Dow buy signal says Warren Buffett's gold stake came too late for the precious metal. Gold had a big day Monday after Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway revealed stake in a gold mine of Barrick Gold, a surprise to many given Buffett's long held negative take on gold as an investment. When gold sells off in a week by 5% or more, history says the Dow is set to rise in the near term and the metal continue its dive. So I wanted to take a look at this chart and this is from Ken Show Stats. After gold drops over 5% in a week, 12 times in 2010 to 2019. So bought after the initial move, positive trades 41%, sold one month later and then we see the Dow run. So in the short term, we could see the markets continue to recover to all-time highs and as we can see guys the Dow hasn't yet fully recovered and I do think that you know all of the indexes for the most part are going to hit fresh all-time highs I think it's just a matter of time especially with all the money floating around in the system all the Millennials investing I feel like more people than ever now are trading stocks investing in stocks just because they saw what happened since the whole crash I feel like there's a lot of people in general just waiting for the markets to crash and when it did Everybody had all this time on their hands. A lot of people, you know, were working from home, wanting to make money in other ways, all this stimulus going on. So I feel like it's a number of factors, but that's definitely one of the biggest factors I feel like right now that's pushing markets and will continue to push markets. But for how long? Because stimulus can't go on forever. So that's when I think that, you know, right now that might be what we're seeing. We're seeing, you know, all of these different factors, all the stimulus, people with more time on their hands, interested in the stock market, just pumping the markets. But what happens come election time? What happens when we get over the stimulus? People have to get back to work. Life will go on and companies will still make money. But um, we haven't really felt the long term effects of this whole global illness. It was a short term effect in the market. The market obviously plunged and has recovered since the economy plunged. I don't think it's fully recovered. 
obviously the stock market and the economy are completely detached right now. But um, I do think we will see more volatility. We haven't seen it yet. And when we do, I feel like, you know, that will support gold and silver. But I wanted to talk about an interesting topic. And this is from CNBC. A $24 trillion wealth transfer shows why businesses will need to watch out for millennial investment trends. And I do think that this is really important. So millennials love to focus on ESG. So for anyone who doesn't know what ESG is, ESG is an environmental, social, and corporate governance. It refers to the three central factors in measuring the sustainability and societal impact of an investment in a company or business. So taking all factors into account, environmental, I'd say more so, especially for millennials, that environmental aspect because millennials care more about the environment. You know, they want to invest in companies like Tesla. They want to invest in companies that have, you know, renewable energy. That's why, you know, in terms of dividends, I think that renewable energy is going to be a fantastic long-term sustainable sector for dividends. So we will make more videos on renewable energy stocks. That is one topic that I want to talk about, one sector that, you know, I want to continue to focus on. I've made a couple of videos about it in the past. Let me know in the comments if that's something that you guys would like you to talk about some interesting companies that focus on renewable energy. So as we know, guys, right now, $24 trillion is being transferred from the baby boomers to the millennials. And that's like 24 trillion is a ton of money. So the bottom line and the reason why I wanted to point this out is when you're looking at stocks, I think now more than ever, you need to take into account, you know, what is the company doing for the environment? What is the company doing to cater to millennials? Because that will be the future. That's why we've seen companies like Tesla, companies like all these renewable energy stocks run like crazy. And um, as investors, you know, this is definitely something that we should keep in the back of our minds. And it's also why, you know, I think that oil is becoming less and less favorable. Yes, we are seeing energy stocks traded, but energy stocks have gotten almost no love over the last, you know, after this whole buy the dip. So anyways, guys, those are my comments on the markets for today. The last thing I want to say was Apple hit 2 trillion and um, it's quite crazy. But um, once again, another millennial stock. So guys, last but not least, I want to simply take a look at the charts for the S&P 500. And we are trading higher today. We are up quite a few points and um, the S&P 500 is looking to crack 3,400 points. So will the markets keep going for the short term? By the looks of it, yes. I think that the markets could continue to run until we see some volatility. I definitely think that we will see some volatility surrounding the election, depending on the outcome, and that could set the tone for the rest of the year. But up until then, to be honest, I think that we're just slowly going to grind higher as stimulus is still in play and gold's kind of going to be shaky for a little bit. And then it gives us a chance to reposition our portfolios and really think about how to position it for the election. and. That's all I got to say, really. So do I think the market's overvalued a little bit? Yes. But do I think it will keep going up? Probably. And um, expect volatility later on this fall. So very interesting time that we're in. The last thing I wanted to do was jump into the charts. And that will be it for the video. So in terms of biggest gainers, biggest losers, Coyos Beverages, MindMed, and Sundog Growers are the three biggest losers. MindMed, once again, couldn't hold on to 50 cents. And I got to say, pretty disappointed. So we'll see if this company can actually, you know, make a recovery. But for now, you know, it definitely doesn't look like it's holding on to 50 cents. Well, it's not. And um, I hope that we can get some positive news soon because 50 cents has been a level that's been so hard to crack. Time to take a look at the dividend stocks. So Brookfield Renewable Energies is the biggest gainer on the day. And that's funny how we were just talking about renewable energies as Brookfield is the biggest gainer. Now let's take a look at the gold and silver sector. And we are seeing a red day African gold group biggest Loser, although Termolina Metals remains in the green at $1.35. So just a select couple stocks in the green. In terms of tech stocks, we are seeing AEY, Facebook, and Apple once again hitting fresh 52-week highs. And then in our broader 2020 watch list, we're seeing Else Nutrition run again up 8.2%. And JD.com continuing to hit 52-week highs. I'm really surprised how great JD.com has been performing. Charlotte's Web, JNUG, and Kinross, three biggest losers. Charlotte's Web declining, although it has made an attempt at a recovery, but um, we'll see if that can happen. Anyways, guys, that's it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to drop those comments below. Let me know, and we're out of here. We'll have more videos on the way. Always remember, guys, Departures Capital is for information, education, and entertainment purposes only. Don't buy or sell a stock because you heard it on here. Buy or sell a stock because you've done your research, you've done your thorough due diligence, and you're making your own personal investment decisions for yourself. 
This video is not financial advice. We'll see you guys in our next video. Thank you.